Well, hello to those of you who are listening, but also watching live. I am here with Lori Palau. I'm excited because she not only is she a professional organizer, but she's also a podcaster. So I can't wait until we get into our conversation about clutter, but also personality. So Lori, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to sit down and chat with you. So what made you decide to, of course, one, be a professional organizer, but then also start a podcast? Oh, gosh. So probably dumb luck on both or just ignorance. <laughs> um, no, in all seriousness. So I'll give you the the quick Cliff Notes version for anybody that's listening that's maybe thinking about embarking um, on this journey for themselves. I always like to just kind of give my little origin story. Um, like many people who I think are in this industry, organizing came somewhat naturally to me. And in my past professional life, I was a executive recruiter. So I always work with people and I loved working with people. It was just a different modality. I was helping people find their motivation for job change. And now it's it's just a different type of evolution in their life. So a lot of the skills and the things that I was doing were really just super transferable. And basically I was, I, my kids were little. I was, my husband traveled a lot. So I always say I was like a single mom with a paycheck. Okay. And I was looking for a way to find a career that allowed me the flexibility to wear all the hats that I needed to both personally and professionally. and. I had a lot of friends who were struggling with things that just seemed like these things shouldn't matter. Like the fact that your playroom's stressing you out, I get it, but like we can fix this. So I had a lot of things that I felt like I could fix quickly for people. And a friend of mine was like, have you ever thought of doing this professionally? And this was in 2009. I always like to set the stage. There was no Instagram. We were talking right before we hit record about social media and, and how we use that in our businesses nowadays. That was not really a thing. I mean, Facebook was really just starting to take off and it wasn't used the same way it was. So it was very like grassroots, just kind of reaching out to the people in my community. And it just kind of, the business just evolved from there. And I loved it. Um, as for podcasting, I had been, you know, back in 2009, 2010, that, those were big blogging. And I know I'm dating myself, but those were like the big blogging era. And I didn't consider myself like a mommy blogger, but I was blogging pretty frequently, a lot of times just to get, you know, reach people from a different modality. And I had a friend of mine who's an anchor woman because I would do like local regional TV in our, I live in the Philadelphia area. So I would go on show, you know, and do like morning segments. And I didn't really know the first thing about podcasting. I mean, I knew it would existed, but this was like 2016 now, fast forward. And she said, have you ever thought about doing a podcast? And I was like, no. <laughs> and she said, well, I've, I, and I was like, I don't know anything about it. And she had a friend who was a producer and I met with him and basically started it as a way to just take my blogs and just recycle that content in, a, a, in an audio form. And I had zero expectation about this at all. And then it took off and the rest is history. So you never know, but that's really my origin story. And I, like I said, I like to tell to people because sometimes the things that you just don't even think are going to turn into something really amount to something big. And you're right, Lori, and you're not dating yourself because see, when I started, I was still passing out flyers. So you know how <gasps> love Wait, Janet, I tell the story that my daughter's would tell people that their mom was in the business of flyers because I would make flyers and stick them in people's mailboxes. And my preschooler was in the car seat in the backseat of my car. And I would go and put them in and people were like, what did your mom do? And they go, she does flyers. I kid you not. So trust me, I know. <laughs> so Lori, what is the connection? Because this is one of your areas of expertise, connection between clutter and our personality. Yeah. So I very early on, and again, I think that this dates back to my recruiting days where I was really focused in on the motivation. What motiv motivated people for change, right? So back in my recruiting days, it was 
Do you want more money? Do you want to travel? Do you not want to travel? Do you want, like, there was all of these motivations for why people would make career decisions. And I looked at clutter and organization from the same approach in in an oversimplified way, right? So I would say, is your goal to yell less at your kids? Is your goal to have a calmer morning? Is your goal to have a Pinterest perfect pantry? Like everybody's goals are different. And it's would be ignorant of me to just come in there and assume that what matters to me is what matters to my client, right? I learned that very early on. What I would walk in your house and maybe see as a pain point and it doesn't bother you, or you say, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed. And I'm like looking around going, this is fine. Like, what are you stressed out about? Everyone's got their own why. And so I started really looking at that why. And that's really was the impetus for kind of how I approached the organizing strategies, figuring it out. And then the deeper I went into that, um, I started looking at personality and communication styles. So how does your personality, and I do a lot of work with the Enneagram. I don't know if your audience is familiar with the Enneagram, but if you're not, it's a personality typology that looks at your motivation and there's nine main core different personality styles. And really what it looks at is the why you do what you do. And so what I love about it is it gives people context for language. Doesn't give you an excuse, but it gives you context. And a lot of times with clutter, people can't articulate it. They know how it makes them feel. They feel anxious. They feel overwhelmed. They feel stressed. They feel embarrassed. Whatever the fill in the blank is, but that feeling, they have difficulty articulating that into like action. What do we do about that? And so the more that we can start to bring the language around it, it opens a door for communication. And so I have found that by just providing some context and asking like questions about what the value is to people, because I think really it comes down to what the value is for them of what is it that you're, you know, what is your clutter worth? What is your time worth? Um, and that really is what helps move the needle with behavior change because ultimately coming in to fix it, and you know this, anyone can hire somebody to come in and make your space look pretty or tidy or organized. But it's what do you do when we leave? What do you do after we walk out the door? And life happens and we all get busy and we are in busy seasons of our lives. So things are always going to fall off the wagon a little bit. But the goal is to try to, in my opinion, put some guardrails in and have that communication so that clutter doesn't cause conflict. And I see clutter causing conflict in relationships between parent child. I see causing re relationship uh, like conflict between husband and wife. I just had a conversation the other day with a client of mine who just had her third baby. She's got two toddlers and an infant. She works part time, plus she handles all the mental load of everything in the house or the majority of the mental load. And her husband's frustrated because things around the house are just organized. And, you know, I said, there are certain things that we can put into place, but sometimes you just need help. But where, you know, where the, the conflict is happening is they don't have the language. So starting to open the door up and provide that, I think really helps to remove some of the power that our clutter has over our lives. You know, and I agree, because as you were talking, I had a conversation with someone yesterday and you know, they're coming together. They're going to be as a couple. They're going to be moving in together. And it's like, you know, we're frustrated because I got stuff. She got stuff. And I says, you know, you really need to have a conversation and you really need to start planning. I said, for example, you know, I've got a toaster. He's got a toaster. But then my toaster happens to match the refrigerator that we're going to have. <laughs> so maybe, you know, I said, sometimes it's just having those little conversations. I said, because if you think about it, when you hit a certain age, you know, and I'm in my 50s, I've got stuff. And I know he's got stuff. He might have three or four TVs. I've got a couple TVs. We can't bring all that stuff together. So I like the way you said sometimes it's just about having those conversations, but also about what you said about how, you know, like we come in and we see, oh yeah, this is this, but a lot of times those might not be the trigger points for people. And I don't know if you see this, Lori, but a lot of times people will try to straighten up 
before I come over. And I'm like, don't do that. I really just want to see how you live. Hundred percent. I want to create something, a system that works and flows with how you live. Not come in here and try to create something that you're not going to be able to maintain. So thank you for saying that. So for somebody who may be thinking about, okay, you know what, Lori's speaking, she's speaking my language in regards to the person. So how do I understand it? Or how do I just approach it so that maybe I can start dealing with the stuff in my life? Um, so I think again, for me, I'm, I'm a, I like to write things down. And again, whether you're writing it down pen and paper, whether you're writing it down digitally in your notes app, whatever, I think just getting it out of your head and putting it on paper is really helpful. Um, and I just tell people just brain dump it, right? Like this doesn't have to be anything. Um, but you know, being able to say like, first of all, this is what's stressing me out. And this is why, because again, Again, it's, and I see this a lot when it comes to couples, it's like one person, the clutter is really anxiety producing. The other person is what I call maybe clutter blind. Like it just doesn't bother me. It's just not like, I don't care that the garage is a mess or it doesn't bother me that the dishes are in the sink, but it bothers you. And so writing it down and looking at it from the relational perspective is how can we, if at the end of the day, our goal is we want to have a healthy relationship. We don't want to fight. We don't want to like, it's so, it's so pointless, right? At the end of the day, we're fighting over dishes or laundry or whatever it is. So it's really about how can we as a team figure this out? And so if somebody comes to me, I always say, where's your pain point and what is your goal? Because that's another thing where a lot of times people know that this is stressing them out, but they don't know where they want to go. And just like if you were going to be getting in a car, some days we go out for like the Sunday drive, you know, where you're just kind of aimlessly wandering around. But if you really have a destination of where you're trying to get to, you need to have some sort of roadmap. You need to know, and there are multiple ways that you can get there, right? You can take the highway, you could take the scenic back roads. So it doesn't matter to me which path you choose to get there as long as it's clear, like we want to get here and we want to have like some parameters because again, we assume it's human nature for us to assume that people are mind readers or that they, it, why isn't this stressing them out or what, you know, what, why isn't this? And it's, uh, it's not always obvious like the and that when i started really digging into the personality work it was so eye opening to me to be like wait you don't you don't see that or like certain people who are really perfectionist in nature they're like wait you don't have this inner critic that's constantly criticizing you all the time on everything that you're doing and i'm like no i just do it and if it doesn't work i'll fix it later and people are like wait what so we just take for granted that everybody sees the world the same way that we do and the things that stress us out should stress out other people and it's just not so and so again figuring out what is our pain point, where do we want to go? And if it is a relational thing, doing this exercise with your spouse, you know, because again, as it, or your partner, if you're, you know, living with somebody, whatever, and you can even do it with roommates. Like these are the things like as, as a team in whatever capacity that is, this is, this is where our goal is. This is our shared vision. And I like the way you said that because that brought of us something when a woman stopped me, we were, I was at an event. She stopped me. She said, you know, Janet, my husband just needs to get organized. And I said, okay. I says, well, what's the issue? She said, he comes home and he just throws his hat here and his keys there. And I says, well, have you ever considered getting a hook? So when he comes in the door, he can just hang his hat and his keys. And she's like, huh, no. She said, thank you. And I said, and sometimes I said, you know what? It's not about, like I said, it's not about changing somebody's habits. It's just about creating something around what they already do. Well, you know, Lori, I could talk to you forever. Well, I love what you said, but I love what you just said because it, it is, it's about, and that's the thing is the simpler, the better. I think a lot of times also people make the mistake of thinking that it has to be overly complicated. And I am like, uh, the simpler, the better, like, if I'm cooking a one pot meal is you're like speaking my language. I want this to be as simple as possible. And I always tell people the end result of the, the whole purpose for me of any organizing system 
is about the ease of retrieval. How quickly can I find it when I need it? So the quicker, the better, right? How quickly can I, because that's when it matters, right? Things aren't a problem until it is, until you need that piece of paper, until you need that fill in the blank, until your kid's running out the door and they can't find their cleats, whatever the thing is, your keys, whatever. So if you can create, if you, if we could dumb down the system, to be honest, and just make it super simple, that those are the most successful ones that are sustainable. When you make it so complicated, that's when people are like, I, I can't do this. This is too time consuming. And you're so right. You're so right. So Lori, do you have like maybe one tip or two of how you stay organized? Because you are a professional organizer, you're a podcaster, you're a mom got the daughters you're probably involved in the community and I still can't you know I was reading over some of your stuff and I'm like she has she has daughters that are older because I think about them just in the car seat so I still can't but how do you manage it all um lots of alcohol no I'm just kidding (laughs) um no so a couple things I I I'm a big time blocker so I have very specific buckets of time that I allot to different things. Um, And it's funny, at the time of this recording, I run a big charity event in our community that raises money for pediatric cancer funding. And um, it's a great event, a lot of moving parts. And so I'm in crunch time, right? Our event's coming up, you know, in a couple of weeks, right before Mother's Day. And um, the only way I'm able to keep saying in addition to delegating and having people, which is my other thing, is delegating things within my house as well as my business and my volunteer work is being very specific. So I know that whether it's I'm blocking two hours in the morning, I'm blocking a day, I'm blocking a portion of a day, whatever it is, I have different like Thursdays are my podcast days. So I do all of my podcasting work there. So everything else, unless it's an absolute total fire does not get addressed except on Thursdays. I do my volunteer stuff on certain times. I focus in with clients on certain days. So it allows me to stay organized and be able to communicate with either guests or clients of this is my availability, or I will get back to you on Friday when whatever. So I'm able to set an expectation for people because I think communication, again, is so important. So I have a plan of action of I know. So that way I know Thursdays I'm going to come in, I'm going to sit down and do X, Y, and Z, and I can check that off. So time blocking has been huge for me. Second thing, which I said is delegating. And that is something that has come with some age and hopefully wisdom. Um, very prideful in my thirties. I'm not going to lie, you know, thirties and even in my early forties, very prideful that I had to do it all. And I had myself this false narrative, which I know a lot of women fall into as well, thinking that they have to do all the things and wear all the hats. And I tell people all the time, and especially this is true for a lot of my stay at home moms. And I don't know if you see this, but there's this false narrative of like, This is my job, so I have to do all the things. And I tell people, you are the CEO of your home. And the CEO of a business does not do all the jobs. The CEO delegates, the CEO oversees things, but the CEO does not do every single thing because it's impossible. So if you want your home to thrive, whether that's delegating to your kids, your spouse, uh, a professional, you know, there is, these are the things that have to happen. And so as I've gotten older and I've practiced that muscle, I've learned the things that I'm good at, the things I'm not good at, the things that I enjoy, the things that maybe I enjoy, but it's really not the best use of my time. So even though I like doing it, I, it's better served for somebody else to do. And, um, and so delegating has been a really big thing. And then the third thing, and this again goes back to an organizing strategy, but I think it really helps with the communication piece is being very specific in my expectations. A lot of times conflict happens because we're not specific and that can happen with, it could be like, I need help. Mm -hmm. Okay. What does that mean? (laughs) You know, or go clean your room and that means I'm going to shove everything under the bed and my room is clean, but you really meant I want you to put your toys away and your clothes in the hamper, or I need help. Meaning 
I need you to f- come in and fold the laundry, but that might mean, but somebody else might take that to mean I need you to take me to take the kids and get out. So being very specific in what you want and what you need has helped me infinitely in relationships, in my business, and in my personal life. And I'm glad you said that about when you ask for help, be specific, because it brought to remember mine when I was taking care of my mother and mm-hmm. a friend said, Janet, how can I help? And I thought about that and I said, you know what? Right now I'm short on, I need some bread and I need some juice. She said, got it covered. And she bought it over. And even though it was like something small, but that was like amazing and, and major for me. So but it was tangible, but it was tangible. Yeah. And people want yeah. direction. People yeah. want that. We underestimate the fact that when somebody asks and they don't know what to do, mm-hmm. you are giving them a gift by saying, you know what? It would really be helpful if you could run to the store and grab this for me. I'm in the middle of my event and I need signs distributed. I needed a gift basket pickup. So I said to my girlfriend, hey, can you do me a favor? Cause I know you work in that area. Would you be able to drop off a sign to this place and pick up a basket? Absolutely. She was happy to do it. It was, it made a big impact for me and me just being very specific and telling her what I needed gave that clarity. That is such a gift that you can give yeah. to people. Yes. Think about that people. It's a gift. It's a gift. So Lori, how can people connect with you? Cause I mean, I, I feel like, again, I could talk to you all day. I know. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to have you on my show because we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do a, a, a podcast swap here for sure. So we're going to get you on there. Um, for all the podcast listeners, the easiest, I'd love for you to check out my show, um, which is called this organized life podcast. So it's wherever you get podcasts. So obviously when you're done listening to this, um, head on over and and check that out. We're also on YouTube. Um, And then for all of our other stuff, you could just go to our website, which is simply the letter B like boy organized. I'm sure you'll include it in the show notes. We've got our free resources, um, the book, all the other things that we have out there um, to to help you. Cause we have a lot of, you know, we, our goal here and I know this is yours too, is you want to provide content for people so that they can have direction. They can have freedom from the stuff that's holding them back. And so that's really what, you know, anything that we can do to try to help people out there. That's what we're here for. And of course, like as Lori mentioned, the link will be in the show page so you can connect with her directly and listen to her podcast. Lori, thank you again so much for your time. Thank you.